the sun's just come out um, it's quite blusterous and there's a lot of clouds scudding across the sky but just have a look at this this is a monitor that's the energy monitor so the clouds coming in and out and the strength of the sun's going up and down but we virtually use no mains electricity but this is the grid tie it's only a three kilowatt system but it's about nearly five o'clock in the evening and in midday it would be up to two and a half three kilowatt but the sun's just gone in a bit now and now it's coming out and it's up and going and that's just export electricity so I was having a word with somebody and a piece of kit came through the post so let's have a look at it so here it is solar miser version 3 there's the bit of kit what else have we got that's the sensor and this is the solar miser now what happens is this senses how much power is being exported and diverts only that amount of power to some form of resistance heating like storage heater or immersion heater so there's two benefits one you not draw in any power from the mains to run these things although most of the time they're not running at full power but they're on all during the day and the second thing is if you've only got say for instance like we have only a three kilowatt grid tie then there's virtually most of the time your immersion heater if it was on would be drawing some from the mains well this just as a, allows a proportional use so let's say for instance your grid tie is providing one kilowatt for most of the day then it only puts one kilowatt into the immersion heater and all right it's on for considerably longer but you're using home generated power and not drawing any from the grid so it's relatively easy to wire up the instructions are in the manual you've got to have a bit of a brain let's just have a look at these wires you've got an earth and a neutral earth and neutral that's fine okay then what else have we got and they're all nicely labeled okay where your immersion heater is there's obviously a fuse or an MCB um, version of a fuse so basically you take the wire out that goes to your immersion heater from that disconnect method i.e. the fuse or the MCB and you poke that in there and then where the, you've got the trailing loose immersion heater wire it goes in there and gets cramp, crimped so then it, the immersion heater is connected via the solar miser and it's protected by the fuse this one here is a secondary load so when the immersion heater switches off because its thermostat says that's enough then that surplus electricity can be sent off to something else like a storage heater etc etc so there you go but it has to be a resistance because obviously the power is proportional so you can't have something that really needs 240 volts full current all the time so the only thing that it says in here about the immersion heater is you've got to test the immersion heater circuit with a multimeter just to make sure that the um, it has the right resistance the details are shown on page 5 the main thing is 
disconnect switch off from the mains make sure everything's switched off then you have to check the resistance of the immersion heater circuit now of course although it's disconnected from the mains you still got to have the immersion heater switched on although there's no power going through it and make sure that the um, uh, the thermostat hasn't switched itself off because if it switched itself off there'll, there'll be no circuit and then you've got to have 17 ohms and then also between live and earth you have to check for it has to be less than one meg ohm so that just checks the quality of the circuit there then what else have we got we've got the sensor and you put this on and plug it into a little jack on the side here and it does say that uh, plug it in and check that the this LED here does what it's supposed to do if it doesn't then disconnect it take this off turn it round and reconnect it now this LED here because it doesn't have a an LCD screen because they're obviously trying to keep the cost down the LED flashes in codes and the codes are in the book but once I've got my head round it I think I will just um, do a, a document on the computer with the various codes print it off tuck it somewhere sensible or just glue it somewhere uh, it's like Flash on, off, equal intervals, says so-and-so. Three flashes and then a gap of, say, for two seconds, says something else. And now I'm going to have a go and wire it up. Making sure that all the power is disconnected before I start. So I've put the solar miser in place. And this wire will want tidying up at some point. So there's the fuse box with... This is the mains fuse box. It's isolated, switched off. The uh, trip switch switched off as well. And let's just have a look. Let's have a look. This is the um, immersion heater fuse. That is the wire to the solar miser from the immersion heater fuse. And it goes along there. There we've got the neutral going to this neutral block and the lie, uh, the earth going to the earth block. So the return from the solar miser is the grey one and the black one. The grey one's the secondary, the black one is the primary. Now we've got the, the multimeter set. So we're going between the immersion heater wiring that's the wire that goes to the immersion heater bearing in mind that it is switched on and I've drawn some hot water to make sure that the thermostat is uh, effectively on let's do the right way around so we've got there to the neutral so there we go 18.8 and that is the resistance 18.8 ohms that's the resistance of the immersion heater circuit so that's within tolerance because I think the minimum was 17 and then we need to go between we need to turn this round to 2 meg I think see what happens we're going between there and the earth and there's nothing going to So that's good. There's nothing between the live and the earth. So all you do really is you take the black wire and you poke it on there and then crimp it up. And if this black wire is too long in this case, what I would be tempted to do is to push this indicator back here, snip it off, tie a knot in it so the indicator doesn't come off and then use the chop block. But let's just do it 
as designed and then you use a crimping tool like that this one stays insulated um, until we need it I haven't got a secondary organized yet so I've got the the monitor clipped onto that live wire there and this goes in to the solar miser just there. Now what it says is to put the screen back on that fuse. But bear in mind this is not live at the moment. Put that on there. Right, immersion heater. 15 amp. Okay, so we put this on here, all the way around. Put that in there. Immersion heater switched on. Switch the power on. Switch the power on. So according to the book, if you were installing after dark, well, it's light, but the panels are in shade now. So it says, it, uh, if you're installing after dark, there is no solar energy available. You would expect the LED to flash once per second. On for half a second, then off for half a second, indicating energy import. If it flashes once every two seconds, then the current clamp should be reversed. I reckon we need to reverse the current clamp. So it says here, if you're doing this installation work during daylight hours, and all the other electrical appliances in the house, besides the immersion heater turned off, then you would expect the solar miser to be balanced state and the LED should be producing 0.1 second pulses as described in F. And where it says F, if the LED is flashing short pulses, 0.1 of a second on time variable off, then the solar miser is balancing the energy from the solar panels minus the energy being consumed by the rest of the house. I reckon that's what that's doing. And we're just on the edge of it not producing anything. So we'll have to wait until tomorrow. Right, it's another day. There's the monitor exporting 2.6 kilowatts. And there's the solar miser with long flash and then off and then long flash, which says that it's exporting power. So the immersion heater has switched itself off. So I'm just going to go and run a bit of water off to see what happens. And now it's flashing, little flash, that shows that um, it's diverting power and it's still a sunny and the monitor, I found that it fluctuates all over the place, but it's much reduced. It was showing 2.6 and now it's showing 300 watts, but... As you see, it's all over the place, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'll have a word with Paul at Solar Miser, see what he has to say. So I've had a reply from Paul Yates at Solar Miser, which is nice. And as you can see, it's not a small email, which again is great because there's some interest there. He basically says that energy monitors measure the electricity in a different way to normal uh, meters and so therefore when the solar miser is diverting power the energy monitor cannot measure it, it accurately. However, I've noticed that when the immersion heater switches itself off the energy monitor then works perfectly. So. You've got a good guide. So then he goes and, and answers another of my questions, which is about the LED flashes. Remember, uh, when it's diverting, you get a little flash and then a gap. Well, it's the number of seconds in the gap that give the amount of 
power being diverted and it's inverse so the shorter the off period in these little flashes the greater amount of power is being diverted so here he says um, two seconds would be 30 pulses a minute which would be 1800 pulses per hour which is equal to 1.8 kilowatt or 1800 watts so three second gap would be 1200 watts and uh, and uh, i'm guessing a one second gap would be three kilowatt so it's nice to get a a complete answer 